Very good afternoon and thanks for clicking on to the 32nd edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is well today and enjoying their weekend, albeit it's nearly over of course. Uh, this is the global temperature normally for the month to date so far, so as of the uh, today, the 12th of March, and we have got a lot of warmth on that chart if you notice here, uh, especially so up across uh, Greenland and uh, the northern portion of North America, eastern North America also. And look at the swathe of Asia that is covered in warmer than average conditions. So it looks as if certainly the warmth is outweighing the cold at the moment, planet-wise anyway. Uh, we are seeing a cold pocket across uh, northern Australia and down kind of central Australia really, extending all the way down into the south and the south. East, we've only got the uh, warmth either side on west coast and east coast, as you can see here. Africa's turned around quite a wee bit, actually, if you notice. Rather than being cold than average, uh, which has been the case really for the best part of 12 months anyway, we're starting to see the average temperature coming up, certainly for the month of March. Very, very warm across the, um, across the Middle East, across uh, Iran, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, you know, Kazakhstan. Uh, into the north of India as well. We've got warmth. Eastern China is just boiling at the moment. We'll have a look at that in just a second. Uh, Japan's warmer than average as well. And um, the UK still firmly below average temperature-wise here. We'll have a look at uh, Europe here. So this is the European continent. You can see here plenty of warmth compared to normal on the charts. Um. I'm trying to make sure that I squeeze everything in. Every single time I do one of these videos, I get frustrated with myself afterwards because there's key things sometimes that I miss that I want to share with you and I forget. It's just there's too many things rattling in my head. Sometimes I don't um, line up the tabs correctly in order and then I end up missing stuff. So I'm going to try my best to try and squeeze all the information that I want you to know about in today's video. This was the scene out of Burktown in Queensland, Australia. Record-breaking uh, rainfall in this region of the world. Look at that there. Very, very major um, flooding situation going on at the moment across uh, the northeastern corner of Australia with um, you know a week of very heavy rainfall, thunderstorm activity and whatnot. So very, very nasty situation here. Uh, I'll look at the El Nino in a second here, but this was an announcement captured um, in California. This was these measurements were taken um, at uh, at Donner Pass, which is one of the very very well known passes across over the top of the Sierra Nevada. And we'll play the video we're and you can see and what they're going to say. Of accumulating snow before we see that peak snow pass. Our, our survey today recorded a snow depth of 116.5 inches and a snow water content of 41.5 inches. Uh, this snowpack actually rivals 1982 and 83, which is the uh, largest snowpack on record. And in fact, the Southern Sierra is actually outpacing, still outpacing 1983. Well, as you can see here, for certainly the, the, the Lake Tahoe region, and of course, the Donner Summit area, which is just a little bit, uh, I believe it's just in the north of Lake Tahoe. Uh, remarkable amounts of snowfall. It looks as if with the current situation, we've got more atmospheric river uh, dynamics in place. One system after another feeding that, uh, running along that atmospheric river, that hose pipe of moisture extending from way to the west of uh, Hawaii, all the way into the west coast of California. And what we're seeing is, uh, you know, major flooding uh, down at low levels here. So parts of the, the LA Basin, for example, is going to see flooding rainfall with multiple inches of, of rain accumulating. We're going to see significant rain all the way up to the San Francisco Bay Area. But of course, get yourself into the foothills of the Sierra. And then, of course, the mid and high levels of the Sierra. We've got major snowfall, a further 100 inches of snow expected in the next seven days. And it looks as if some of these resorts are going to pick up as much as 700 inches of snow for the season. So we're now starting to challenge all time records, you know, back in the, the 1940s, it was a uh, the 82, 83 
We've seen major rainfall, of course, during the Super El Nino of 97, 98. But, uh, you know, with the colder in place engaging over the mountains, we're seeing major snowfall as opposed to major uh, rainfall down in, in lower elevations. But we do have a situation in the Sierra Nevada where they've got like 20 feet of snow on the ground. That, of course, is putting a strain on roofs. These houses and resorts that are, um, you know, 8,000 feet above sea level, uh, the snow continues to pile in. And the weight of that snow, of course, means that we are seeing some places with roof collapses. But there's a major situation involving here where they're needing to try and clear some of that snow off the rooftops of buildings in the High Sierra around the Lake Tahoe region. But it's not just the Lake Tahoe region, even down as far as the Mountain Surin and the LA Basin, we're seeing record breaking snowfall here as well. But the, the snowfall situation, and I actually alluded to this in the 31st edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report uh, about the, the huge amounts of snowfall in the Sierra Nevada. This is a massive turnaround as well, by the way. And I think the southern Sierra more important than the north because the drought was even more severe further south in California. And you look at this, this is a very stark reminder of exactly how much moisture is falling within the atmosphere. This is um, a tweet by the Weather Channel's Carl, Carl Parker, and he shows Lake Oroville with more, so basically the it storms filled California's Lake Oroville with more than 526 billion gallons of water, nearly half of its capacity between the 21st of December and the 8th of March, bringing it up 168 feet. That is remarkable stuff, isn't it? So this is exactly what it looked like, you know, back, uh, I'm assuming anyway, at the start of December before all these storms started to hit. And uh, a pretty dire looking situation, that's for sure. Everybody uh, rattling on about the perma drought and, and you know, uh, the situation and, and it just shows you how nature can turn things around so quickly this is the current view as of the 8th of march so what a complete and it's an incredible visual that really isn't it when you have a look at that uh proper so that's what's going on in california at the moment we are also seeing a uh, tremendous snowfalls in parts of the british columbia mountains as well um so yeah um healthy uh, in some places, probably getting too much of a good thing, of course. And in other uh, places, we're seeing um, drought conditions, we're seeing heat wave conditions, we're seeing midwinter heat wave conditions. And we'll look at China in just a second. Some of the numbers coming out of China, even parts of Japan, is remarkable. Ongoing heat wave across uh, South America at the moment here, a place called Mercedes, 40.5 Celsius recorded, the second highest temperature ever recorded in Uruguay in the month of March. Possibly a new record, uh, but the temperature max is not being uh, declared yet. So this, um, these are, are pretty typical uh, Twitter handles that I look at in these videos. Um, guys like Terry Goose, Maximiliano Herrera uh, provide global weather extremes. And it's always very beneficial to look at these uh, tweets here to see what's going on around the planet at this moment in time. Tremendous heat across parts of Africa. Of course, we've seen the anomaly for the month of March being quite high compared to recent months. Temperatures as high as 45.2 Celsius at Madam in uh, Senegal on the um, uh, Mauritian coast uh, or the border with um, uh, uh, Mauritiana. That's it. I'll get there. Um, so very, very intense heat. Some of the warmest March days on record for these parts of the world here. Uh, we've also had extremely high temperatures in parts of Japan. It's a tweet by extreme temperatures around the world. Dozens of stations haven't recorded their hot, hottest March day on record. Uh, so remember what happened in recent times where we've seen, of course, extreme cold, extreme snowfall. Japan and California can quite often, with the right conditions, be the, the um, snowiest places on the planet. And quite often... There's parts of the Japanese Alps that can have, you know, absolutely incredible. It can actually have more snow in the Japanese Alps than even California during wet periods. But, of course, um, with the warm conditions that we're seeing in Japan, 
their snowpack, yes, albeit very significant, is getting outpaced by what we're seeing in California at this moment in time. Quite interesting, of course, these are images that have already been shown of the recent snow in parts of the British Isles. Uh, again, Argentina, part of uh, the South American heat wave. This is some crazy stuff here. So over 200 stations. This is Jim Yang based in China. Uh, a crazy day where 200 uh, stations in China broke the record in early March for the hottest temperatures. Uh, you know, several places recording 30s, near mid 30 degree heat. Remarkable for the month of March, of course. 27.9 Celsius in Beijing. Shouldn't be anywhere near that, by the way. I think that's a, a record that's been smashed by five, over five and a half degrees above the early March record for heat here. So China has seen some remarkable swings in temperature over the course of the last three months or so. We've seen the first minus 50s uh, in, a, in a long, long time. In fact, we had all-time record breaking cold in parts of China, remember, Back in the month of December, now we're seeing all-time record um, warm March temperatures, of course, also. So, um, yeah, uh, the first time, by the way, uh, for the UK that we've seen three mornings below minus 15 since March 2001. And I believe last night was the first, uh, the temperature dropped below minus 10 up in Altenhara. And that was actually the fifth night in a row the temperatures dropped into double digits below freezing which is pretty impressive for the month of march that's for sure and of course the coldest temperature being minus 16 celsius so i'm um, trying to make sure that i don't forget anything else let's go to the, uh, the the la nina situation at the moment we do have an off the scale madden julian oscillation five eight, uh, phase eight in the one and what's important about this is not only it's it's probably you know the first time it's ever really been off the scale so off that plot chart let's have a look and see if i can find it just to show you what i'm talking about here uh, pretty crazy stuff actually um this is the plot chart and it's it is actually off this grid here and i believe that's the first time that that has taken place but what's important about this is it's developing a strong westerly wind burst which therefore means that we're now starting to force warming over the eastern portion of the Pacific Ocean. So uh, NOAA, I believe, has declared the end of the three-year La Nina. So gone is that La Nina that has been so prevalent in the last three years and its influences affecting global climate. We are now going to start to see the warming of the, the Pacific and it looks as if we are going to see the development of a, an El Nino during the spring, the latter half of the spring and into the summer months. I personally, now the ECMWF is indicating that we are going to have potentially a warm summer once again. I personally believe that we're leaning towards a wetter summer. And I'll look at that in a good bit more detail coming up in the next several weeks here when I'm going to start to share some of my thoughts on summer. It's just been too busy recently to get there. The Arctic Oscillation is it has been of course firmly negative it's now uh, up towards neutral it looks as if it takes a little bit of a dip back in the negative if you notice here whereas the nao looks as if it is going to go neutral and stay neutral so you can see that here that it's flatlined and neutral at the moment uh, interesting enough this is the the gfs ensemble and uh, this is the upcoming five day period now and what one thing i will say is that it's actually pushed to colder air for the next uh, five days a little bit further north than what I anticipated so it actually has warmer than average generally average to slightly warmer than average across the bulk of ireland wales and england colder than average across the north uh, looking at the day two through six you see it's pushing it a little bit further south the three through seven colder than average once again as well and of course if you look at the gfs this is the 850 temperatures mild conditions at the moment this is the wettest day of the year so far for for my weather station it's been a, a right measurable day that's for sure and it probably has been elsewhere as well but we're in the warmer and that milder has managed to reach all the way to the north of scotland over the next 24 hours we're going to see that colder plunging south as that area of low pressure exits to the east we do have an increased chance of building the snowpack once again and